There is life beyond our solar system. The idea of life on planets other than Earth has fascinated scientists for many years. Their attention is now focused on Titan, a moon that defies all our preconceived notions about habitability. However, they've found that life is more complex than we previously thought. It's nothing like we could have ever imagined, much stranger and far more unsettling. Underneath Titan's mysterious and gloomy exterior lie truths that challenge our very comprehension of existence. The intriguing prospect of life on Titan has been heightened by these new findings, which have shown the existence of complex chemical compounds on the moon. What shape, though, might this life take? How have they adapted to survive in such harsh conditions, which are unfathomable to us? Come with us as we explore the terrifying depths of Titan's mysteries, where the meaning of life itself is redefined. Titan is the strangest, most exotic moon we know in many respects. It's by far Saturn's largest moon, and was long believed to be the largest moon in the solar system, although Ganymede of Jupiter has since surpassed it for the title. Titan has has a deep atmosphere, unlike any other moon in the solar system. At 1.5 bars, its surface pressure is 50% higher than that of Earth. Furthermore, Titan's atmosphere is the only known atmosphere apart from Earth's in which nitrogen makes up the majority of about 95%, with methane making up the remaining portion and a scattering of unusual organic compounds. Until recently, the surface of Saturn's biggest moon remained shrouded in an orange haze, making its mysteries all the more perplexing. However, after Cassini's arrival in June 2004 and the extraordinarily successful parachute down of the Huygens probe onto Titan's surface, our understanding of Titan was much enhanced. It doesn't rain water on Titan. Photographs taken in 2005 and six at Hawaii's Keck Observatory and Chile's Very Large Telescope revealed practically universal cloud cover at high altitudes on the moon, from which a continuous morning drizzle fell across the western foothills of Titan's main continent, Xanadu. It was a drizzle of methane. Methane is the most common liquid on Titan due to the low temperatures, while it's typically thought of as a gas in our world. Titan has a methane cycle in place of a terrestrial water cycle. However, very little of the methane that rains down from Titan's atmosphere makes it to the ground level. Rather, it typically evaporates above the surface, just like precipitation frequently occurs over the American Southwest's desert region. Only very occasionally, it seems, does Titan experience a real downpour. Although Titan's weather and chemistry are very different from Earth's, several of its features look remarkably similar to Earth's. Even though they are most likely dry most of the time, the large portions of the big moon that resemble river systems and their tributaries were undoubtedly sculpted by flowing methane. On Titan, dune fields dominate some latitudes, while countless lakes, both large and small, dot other latitudes near the poles. These lakes are filled with liquid hydrocarbons, mostly ethane the second simplest hydrocarbon, and methane, with some nitrogen mixed in. The moon's terrain is rough, with many steep valleys and high cliffs. Slippery ice would increase a visitor's risks. The Huygens probe landing site, in comparison, featured a topography that was mostly flat and desert-like, broken up only by a large number of tiny ice cobbles. Titan may not appear to have any liquid water on or near its surface, given that its average surface temperature is about minus 292 degrees Fahrenheit. However, there is some evidence of flowing water bright flows, as opposed to the dark ones caused by liquid hydrocarbons. Once moving water is most likely explained by low temperature volcanic activity or cryovolcanism, driven by tidal forces from Saturn. A distinct type of activity occurs within Titan's thick atmosphere, propelled by solar ultraviolet radiation and to a greater extent by radiation intensified within Saturn's potent magnetic field. By dividing many of the molecules in the environment into radicals, very reactive molecular fragments with a free electron, the high-energy bombardment encourages the assembly of organic compounds. Acetylene, an energy-rich hydrocarbon molecule with two hydrogen and two carbon atoms connected by a triple bond, is one of the organic compounds produced in this manner. Solid particles of acetylene form in Titan's atmosphere and fall to the Moon's surface. Acetylene is explosive under normal Earth conditions and should be handled carefully. However, it's the perfect material to encourage the accumulation of complex molecules in Titan's chilly surface environment, where reactions would otherwise be excruciatingly slow. Only recently have scientists started to consider the potential that life exists on Titan, either underneath or above its surface. Recent Cassini data has added credence to the theory that Jupiter has an interior ocean like those suspected on several of its moons. Given the high concentration of nitrogen on the moon, Titan's ocean, if it exists, probably has a lot of ammonia in it. As an antifreeze, this would maintain the ocean's liquid at a temperature close to minus 148 degrees Fahrenheit, which would be far lower than it would be if it were pure water. Generally speaking, it appears that if life exists on Titan, it must be substantially different from earthly life. 
Severe cold and peculiar hydrocarbon-based chemistry would almost certainly guarantee a distinct set of adaptations, starting at the biochemical level. Furthermore, given the extraordinary rarity of creatures being carried between the inner and outer solar systems on meteorites, a distinct genesis of life would be virtually certain. The abundance and diversity of life throughout the universe would be profoundly affected by the finding of weird life and a second genesis on Titan. Even though life on Saturn's large moon would be very different from Earth, it may nonetheless employ strategies similar to those used by plants and animals on Earth when things are tough. Consider the plant known as Eastern Skunk Cabbage. This peculiar plant, whose scientific name is Simplicarpus foetidus, is a member of the thermogenic or heat-generating group and has sulfurous leaves. Amazingly, it can melt its way through frozen ground before blossoming because it generates enough heat to raise its temperature to 59 to 95 degrees Fahrenheit above the ambient air. This kind of aptitude, modified to function at even lower temperatures, would be perfect on Titan, where a creature might utilize chemistry to improve the habitability of its immediate surroundings. True, many creatures on Earth, including algae, can melt their own tiny watering holes in the ice using the waste heat they produce during metabolic activities. These holes, called cryokonites, are frequently observed in Arctic pack ice and on glaciers. Methane is even released by some of the meltwater beneath the glacier ice sheets. Is it possible that this process might account for Titan's high atmospheric methane levels, as well as its seemingly smooth and young surface? Scientists have always been baffled by Titan's methane. Although the concentration reaches roughly 5% in the lower atmosphere of the Moon, there isn't a clear source for this much gas. The conventional theory states that throughout millennia, a large amount of methane gas gets trapped in Titan's frozen crust and is being slowly released. However, considering that methane is constantly broken down in the Moon's atmosphere, it is difficult to fathom in simple chemical terms how this large store of methane could have built up. Methane is typically the byproduct of microbial metabolism on Earth, and it's possible that this is also the case on Mars. Analog sites are a constant source of interest for astronomers. These are earthly locales that share certain characteristics with regions on other planets. For instance, you can find some Martian-like features in Antarctica and the Atacama Desert. Is there a Titan analog out there somewhere? As it happens, Trinidad is home to one of them, whereas Venezuela is the other. They are both naturally occurring lakes that contain asphalt, a viscous liquid composed of hydrocarbons. Pitch Lake is undoubtedly not a perfect match for Titan, especially when it comes to temperature. In the long run, nevertheless, the Trinidadian asphalt and the organisms discovered within it should educate us on how life evolved to adapt to being submerged in different oils. Subsequent investigations will also reveal the biochemical modifications and methods these creatures use, as well as whether or not these adaptations help survive on Saturn's massive moon. Titan's cell membranes may differ from others in that they are made of silicon components, known as silanes. Silane, the silicon equivalent of methane, is a reactive gas under standard Earth conditions. It's made up of one silicon and four hydrogen atoms arranged in a tetrahedral configuration. For instance, it will instantly react with oxygen and water to generate silicon dioxide, which is the material that's used to make quartz and sand. Having said that, Titan's ecosystem is very different. There is almost no oxygen, very little liquid water, and almost no carbon dioxide. The biochemistry of Titanian life may make use of nitrogen analogues to make up for the planet's dearth of oxygen. Silanes contain several characteristics that, in the correct circumstances, could make them biochemically appealing. At Titan surface conditions, silane would be a liquid, but polysilanes, comprising several silane molecules layered on top of one another, would solidify at those temperatures. True silicon beings are unlikely to develop on Titan, given the quantity of carbon there and carbon's unique ability to create and break bonds in complex compounds. Science fiction frequently features life based on silicon. Although Titan probably lacks anything like the rock-boring Horta featured in one of the original Star Trek episodes, it may well find novel biochemical uses for this element. Given that Titan's atmosphere is devoid of water, a highly polar and rather hot solvent, the size of living cells on Earth might be an inaccurate model for life there. Scientists have noted that their life may consist of far larger cells, possibly even visible to the unaided eye, in an extremely cold, non-polar, liquid hydrocarbon environment. However, metabolism might move very slowly due to the chilly surface temperatures. While most species on Earth have a lifespan of less than a century, there's no reason to believe that life expectancies on Titan may be as high as thousands or even hundreds of thousands of years. Intricate interactions between reduced and oxygenated molecules or compounds with an excess or deficit of electrons form the basis of the metabolism of Earth's life. 
This might be a condition that all forms of life share, according to astrobiologists. The discovery of oxygenated compounds in sufficient quantities could suggest the existence of chemical reactions mediated by life, because Titan's atmosphere contains an enormous excess of reducing chemicals. Up until recently, scientists would rather discuss the potential of pre-biological chemistry on Titan than discuss actual biology. However, more audacious claims have been made in light of recent moon discoveries. One thing is certain as scientists work to solve Titan's mysteries. The search for knowledge will stretch the limits of science and reshape our role in the universe. Let us know what you think in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and put on the notifications for more videos. See you soon.